Hi everyone, uh, welcome back. Uh, this is Alexander from the Indigo Light YouTube channel and uh, blog. I want to welcome you to another video on this uh, brand new day. I decided to uh, do a change of scenery this time around, as you can obviously see. So we're more connected uh, to nature and in a different element and because this place is so beautiful. So no, no need for explanation there. Um, I want to thank you again for being part of this, uh, this video. It's a new experience. I'm trying to... Uh, to change a bit the format, I'm going to do a video about the book uh, that I wrote, Confessions of an Indigo Child, and elaborate a bit about you know the story behind the book and my journey. Um, I think it's relevant at this time to talk a bit about you know the the things that you've resonated with regarding the channel that have brought you here to be part of this experience, just to understand what what stems behind you know the the current stage of my personal evolution. And how I'm able to contribute to yours as part of my purpose and what my guidance has asked of me. Um, so this is what I wanted to do today. I'll start with a foreword uh, regarding the energies because we are uh, we are the ninth, obviously. Um, the the eighth of August was uh, behind us. It was a very very masculine intense energy. Uh, there's quite a lot of aggression, anger, frustration that came to the surface. I saw it from. My own personal surroundings from clients, I got a lot of emails yesterday, not by coincidence. Um, and I just wanted to touch briefly on that. Um, it's a gateway. So it's a, it's an energy that, that passes through for, for more than a day. Um, it should last until the 15th. I think that we're basically getting rid of any remnants of ego, anger, and many masculine archetype values that we've had to deal with in the past. Therefore, there can be the prevalence of, you know, frustration, um, uh, anger from within, a deep kind of tension, uh, and things that can be reflected from around us, and also being quite upset with the surroundings. So as not to resonate with the people around us and, and what's going on around if we're walking down a busy street. I've noticed this myself, therefore yesterday I spent the, the day, you know, in this, in this beautiful place working. Um, so just to be aware that it is a normal part of the evolution. There's nothing bad, there's nothing uh, negative, uh, despite how this may manifest. It's a normal part of the process. As I said many times before, there's no guidebook for this energy. We're just all learning as we go. Um, I just, I guess it's part of my purpose to go through things a bit earlier, to, to make some mistakes, learn from them, uh, so that they're not mistakes, and, and relay them so that, you know, the journey of whoever's watching is, is a bit easier and a bit more fluid. So... Whatever comes up to the surface in the guise of anger, frustration, tension, anything from within, at yourself, at those around you, um, I don't want you to dwell on it too much. Just understand that it's a passing, uh, it's a fleeting moment in a story of your life. It has a meaning. You can spend a little bit of time trying to ascertain what it means to you and what it's here to teach you uh, in respect to this specific moment. And, uh, and then release it. That's all. You really don't have to dwell on it. Things may come up during the next few days, um, and I just think it's important just to be, um, not to try to understand everything in too much detail, because if you try to focus too much on this moment and, and kind of uh, deconstruct it and try to understand it, there's a moment afterwards that is just as important. So it's, it would be a waste of your time. It's better just to be, to exist, to flow, and to release. And if it bugs you, that's okay. You know, just, we, we surmount, we surmount, sorry our uh, our difficult moments in, in these days and we try to release them and to flow uh, with the universe because we're all going in a similar direction. Um, we're going to end up there at different times. We're going to end up there in different forms or different purposes. But the journey, we still have quite a while to go in terms of not crossing the threshold of the 5D experience but starting to create, to fulfill our purpose, to connect to it find our other halves, our soulmates um, that have been waiting for us for so long. So it's it's really important not to make too much of this period, just to flow. And if we're in a, in a bit of a, not a jam, but if we're in a bit of a, a strange kind of nervous tension, uh, just to ask why. If it's in your heart chakra, if it's in your third eye, just to try to figure out innately what's the situation you're in that is bugging you so much. And then just, you know, most of the time you're just going to release it. It's not something that you need to address in uh, in depth um that's it so be patient be kind if you want to sleep if you want to rest go ahead you don't know anybody in explanations nobody judges you uh in in truth not even the creator so 
there's no point, you know. Just take care of yourself, make yourself a bit more of the priority during this time, and focus on your own trajectory. Uh, now, a uh, short announcement before I, I begin talking about the book. There's a webinar coming up, Navigating the 5D Experience. It will be one of four or five webinars, um, the purpose of which is very simple. Um, I've been doing this for a while, and throughout this, this um, journey, I've understood that a lot of people come with different uh, bits and pieces of knowledge regarding the ascension process and so on. But I really want to go back to the beginning and retrace the journey, explain the basic elements that we're working on, why we're doing this, which is often a question people don't know how to answer. Uh, what does it mean? You know, the basics. Why, why, uh, sorry, why, what, uh, what is the purpose? Where are we at now? Where are we going? And um, I would love to, I guess, impart the visualizations and the, not the tricks, but the tools that you can use to create in 5D at this time. There are certain ways to look at reality, certain uh, visualizations, tools, uh, thought patterns that you can use in order to create a positive energy during a specific day, as opposed to succumbing to, you know, the fear, the anger, resentment, or whatever emotions you had in the past. So it's important that I would love for you to be part of the experience. And by the end of the of the fourth or fifth webinar, the final one is going to be the one where I really, you know, explain in depth some some uh, specific tools which I think are lacking in, you know, 5D uh, experiences that I've seen around in on the internet and so on. So I want to make it tangible, easy. These are basic visualization tools that you can use on a daily basis, preferably after you wake up before you leave your house and face the world. Okay. That's what I'm trying to do with this journey. That's why I want to talk about the book. Things are, are to be more pragmatic, realistic, and useful. I don't want to make things too abstract or etheric or too spiritual because we still need to wake up the next day and, you know, fulfill our duties to society, pay the bills, feed our, our kids if we have any, uh, cater to our relationships, take care of our bodies. These are things that are important. We can't just... I, I think there's no magical moment where you're going to snap your fingers and wake up in 5D and you're free of all these things. I think that's an illusion. I would like to burst it uh, and, 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 and bring forth a new proposition. It starts from you. It starts within. And I hope the, the, the webinar helps with this as well. Okay. And I would love for you to see you there uh, to be part of this experience. Um, on to the book. Um, I started writing the book in 2011. I had finished studying with my teacher i studied from 2009 for about a year and a half did some sessions afterwards um, and i was in a stuck place with my life and i had like an energetic download that i needed to get rid of an energy that was sitting on my crown chakra so i sat down for a month and a half two months and i wrote this book it poured through me i don't i can't really say that i wrote it um it just you know i'm not a writer i'm not an author i'm just a, just a guy um, I guess I write decently, but, you know, I'm, I haven't studied any of this stuff. I just, you know, took the computer out, started typing away. And basically, it's the confessions of my journey without any censorship. I've put it all in there. The point of, of this is very simple. Um, I was told by my guidance it was my purpose. Not what I'm doing in terms of the videos and, and, and the channel and sessions and so on. It stemmed from the book because it started from there. And the, throughout the journey, um, I, I, I get all, a lot of feedback from people that have read it already over the, the last couple of months and a little bit beforehand. Um, we're all, whether we're indigo kids or crystal children or rainbow children or whatnot, um, it doesn't really matter. At the end of the day, everything is energy. And we all have these elements within us. So I call it confessions of an indigo child because that's what I was defined as by my teacher when I reached her, you know, her... Her center and I started studying and I really resonated with what it meant. Now it's it's been years, so you know things have evolved and things have, have become bigger, uh, more uh, energetically complex, and more energetically simple as well. Um, so in regards to the book, I try to put my journey into the book. The purpose of which is for people that read it to be able to draw the parallels and understand from their journey, um, because. At the end of the day, we all come from the source. We all kind of devolved, and we're re-evolving into a 5D experience. We're reascending. Uh, we've done this before, actually, 25, 30,000 years ago, uh, during the days of Atlantis, and and since then things have you know 
gone downhill and now back uphill. Um, we're remembering who we are. We're not really recreating anything. The way that we're becoming now is the way that we were meant to be. Uh, 5D enables you to have the highest consciousness level within the highest physical level with, with still having a physical body and having physical experience. That's why at this time, and I'm going to say this openly, most of you, because I get a lot of emails, I talk to people, people tell me their stories, are, are evolved souls, the first waivers that are supposed to awaken, you know, the people that will awaken later. Um, the highest souls ever in creation from other galaxies, planets, universes, dimensions have come forth now to help because, you know, at the end of the day, the, the, the sole purpose of the universe and the sole purpose of any soul is to learn and to help, you know, uh, in, in terms of energy, you don't need to eat, you don't need to procreate, you know, at the higher levels beyond the physical. Um, so the most evolved souls with the most knowledge and the highest frequencies are here to, to help the planet ascend, to give back, um, to cater. And um, this, is, this is your purpose for many of you, to be able to be present now at the highest level of spirituality still within a physical body, either as a learning experience or as a giving back experience, or sometimes as a karmic experience for things you've done in other lifetimes. This is a part of a learning process again. Um, so I started this journey um, as, a, as an outcast for most of my life, from being a child within my own family structure. This is why I'm talking about the indigo. This is why I'm talking about the parallels. I get this story again and again and again and again from people. Um, and throughout most of my life, I've been on my own. I've been on the, on the outside looking in, on the inside looking out. I was never uh, in sync with my elements. And I was always kind of able as a kid to, to look at adults. Um, this is, the, this is the, actually the defining factor. When you're very small and you're able to look at adults and notice the patterns of people lying to themselves, people pretending, people, um, these kind of, when you're a kid, you know, the adults are big, large people with all the answers. They know everything. Um, so when you're a kid and you have this bubble burst and you realize that it's not so, it becomes quite a destructive pattern because you feel like you're, you're on your own and you need to kind of cater to yourself through life because you don't have um, somebody to watch your back, so to speak. Um, and that was the story for most of my life. Um, I have an innumerable amounts of accounts of trying to be self-destructive uh, and that brought me to my ultimate downfall after my college years when I had a kind of a nasty accident and I had to deal with a lot of things on my own and I came back home uh, after college when I was about 23, 24 and my entire life just fell apart. I mean, you know, physical, family, friends, uh, personal life, um, everything that could fall apart fell apart and I had a kind of nervous breakdown and I had to deal with the situation for a while by myself and I had an addiction problem for many years beforehand. It was, it just became much more severe. And I was, I've said it in the book, I, I talk about all these things openly. Uh, it was the necessity to destroy myself so I wouldn't be have, to have to be here uh, because I never really empathized with, you know, life as it was or with the world and I really never understood why we're here and the futility of making money and being successful and all these things. I tried to convince myself it was meaningful, but inside I knew it was nonsense. Um, so there was the ultimate question, what on earth am I doing here? What's my purpose? You know, But that's, that started from the age of three, four. And the big adults walking around, they don't seem to have the answers. So, you know, who do I talk to? I had no one to talk to. Um, my addictions led me to a, I had two near-death experiences. Um, the second one almost took my life. I mean, on a bigger scale than the first one. Um, and I had to stop. I had a drinking problem and a substance abuse problem. Uh, after that day, I stopped. I cold turkey because I understood that, you know, I had a, an I had an aha moment, an awakening moment, and I understood that I can have two choices. I can keep on going that road and you know successfully destroy myself, or I can dedicate my second round to figuring out what on earth I'm doing here, because it can't be that, um, you know, this is all there is. We're just meat suits floating around, trying to make money, trying to be successful, make families procreate, you know, but for what, what are we, what are we procreating for? And what are we giving to our children when we bring them to this world, which didn't seem amazing at the time. Um, one of the things that awoke me in my darkest moments was, uh, a, a flicker of hope 
I always had a flicker of hope that even though I went to doctors and people and psychiatrists, physicians, everybody to try to help me, and they told me you have to accept your condition, I never thought that was okay. I thought they were, you know, full of nonsense, basically. And I said, I know there's somebody walking around this planet that has been in this situation and able uh, was able to resolve it by miracle or whatever you want to call it. And because of that person, I'm going to pursue my own journey. Because if that person can do it, I can do it as well. And that was my brindle of hope that kept me going for a very, very long time. Um, the second of all, the second thing, sorry, was a strange understanding that uh, throughout most of my journey, it felt as if I was creating my biggest fears. But in a way that was so um, deliberate and so precise, I said, there's no way that, you know, out of my, I don't know, 20 fears, 21 or sorry, 19 or 20 are actually coming to fruition that I'm not doing this. So if I'm so adept at doing this, maybe I can actually do it for positive purposes. I didn't know about manifestation, traction, nothing. Um, and I really did a really good job of destroying myself for a while. After that episode, I came back uh, from my near-death experience. I came back home, I sat down, and I locked myself in my house for five months, and I started digging. I bought 70, 80 books. I went through all of them, uh, speed reading, trying to understand what on earth, forget the physical, the spiritual world, anything. I was just trying to you know, reach in the dark to something that mattered, that meant something. Um, eventually, it was my birthday. Um, Two weeks before, I had found this thing called the Pauline Arts, which had to do with astrology and angels, and whatever. Um, and I said to Archangel Michael, I had nothing to lose. So I said, okay, there's something called Archangel Michael. Let's, you know, summon it. And I said, Archangel Michael, if you're out there, if you even exist, um, I have nothing to lose. So I'm reaching out. I need a teacher to teach me. I wanted to learn channeling, Reiki, healing, and all these things. If you can, help me out. If you're not up there, that's okay. You know, I've, I'm used to, to being disappointed, so to speak. Um, and about two, three weeks later, on my birthday, I, uh, I had a sleepless night. I was in, living in Israel at the time uh, for work. And I kept on seeing the Wailing Wall, even though I'm really not a religious person. I really personally couldn't care less. Um, I don't see you know, any, any point of man-made uh, religious structures. That's my personal opinion. Um, and I figured out that, you know, I'm going to do something a bit more exciting for my birthday. So I just went for my sleepless nights, got on the train, headed to Jerusalem to just walk around, see the sights, uh, eat some falafel, you know, this kind of stuff. Um, and I sat down on the train. I started to doze off because I actually became tired. Uh, and as I opened one of my eyes, I saw an older woman pacing up and down the aisle. Small woman, very, very cherubic, very nice. Uh, kind looking person uh, she sat in front of me she was all dressed in white she had a, an indigo blue shawl and very very blue eyes um, and she started to channel a few minutes after she sat down she had a piece of paper and I was you know falling back asleep waking up and I looked at her um, and I, I kind of you know I peered at the piece of paper I wasn't supposed to and she wrote on it dear Archangel Michael she was doing what it was channeling automatic writing something along those lines um, after a few minutes, you know, that she was done, I gathered up the nerve and I asked her, you know, what, what is happening here? What, what is the purpose of this? And, uh, cause I understood Archangel Michael, Archangel Michael. And, uh, she basically told me that she was probably on the train for me because there was a weird, you know, series of events leading to that. And she gave me her cards and two weeks later, I, uh, started studying at her center. And that was the, the change, uh, the change in my life. And from then everything just started to, you know. I see, we started to doing past lifetime regression uh, sessions, um, talking about creation, talking about attraction, talking about the effect and the accountability factor within, you know, creating a reality. And I, I went on to this journey for about a year and a half and then on my own, I developed my own tools and so on. Um, but, you know, I went through the healing and the Reiki and the channeling and I include all of this in the book. What I'm trying to say is, we all started, we all have the same uh, kind of rough structure structure to a journey. We have our normal lives, we have the destruction of our normal lives, and then we have it, the catalyst to our awakening. And, you know, we go through a really low period, and then we start to awaken, get tools, learn, and, and, and start to create something new. And most of us are two-thirds who are that journey or at the end of the journey. I hope it doesn't rain. 
Um, so that's what I'm trying to highlight to the book, how it may help people. And that's why my, my guidance really uh, pressed it upon me in 2011 to write the book. And it stayed dormant for about seven years. I even know I did sessions here and there, but I never, I was never really committed as I am now to doing this full time. Um, so essentially afterwards, after finishing my studying cycle, um, I started to have all these crazy experiences by myself. What it was, was simply new guides. I, I, I released my teacher. I went on my own trajectory and things started to happen to me. Uh, you know, I had, I went through guides as I evolved more and more today. I work mostly with the source. Um, the, the reason why is very simple. Everything is energy and, and all the guides that come to us in different forms are all from the same energy. And when we get to, you know, a certain level, we don't need them anymore. Um, we, we are trying to connect with the most abstract, most, uh, powerful energy, which is the source to create it, whatever you want to, you call it. Um, and through this journey, there was the Elohim, the Arcturians for a very, very long time. Um, and a bunch of other guides, Archangel Michael, the Master Metatron, uh, which was actually the first of my guides when I started channeling by myself to all sorts of weird experiences. I highlight them throughout the book. Um, I've gotten a lot of emails over the, the last six months regarding people's journeys. People tell me their journeys and, and, and highlight where they got stuck or where they are stuck. And I, I thought it was very imp important to try to um, to explain to them the, the points of uh, the, the common factors that we've had during our, our journeys. The fact that they're not crazy, you know, if a lot of it, a lot of things happen from inside and it's an inner journey and then you go out in the world and you face your work day. Uh, there are many, many factors that may lead you to believe that you're you're losing your mind. And that's a normal thing because there's no guidebook. And most of the time, it's a very, very lonely journey. And for many, many, many years, it was just me, myself, and I. I it's not something I shared, especially with other people, um, especially my family and friends. Um, and even though I did sessions, but on my own time, on my own rules. Um, and today, it's just, you know, I'm, I'm going full into this because it is my purpose and I'm humbled and, and happy to do this. And it's the only thing that I consider a, a rewarding and two to be real. Okay, I can't say that I, you know, I'm okay with going back to a 3D work setting and, and doing that. Um, but this is what I wanted to highlight in terms of the journey. All the experiences are in there. All my, uh, my encounters with all sorts of, you know, energies, life forms, guides. Um, and it's been a very, very rewarding journey. And I, I talked to, again, a lot of clients that come at this specific time in our the paradigm shift as we ground into 5d people want to understand how to find purpose people want to understand how to start channeling and all these things that's why i wanted to share my journey so that hopefully you can from reading the book I, there's also an audiobook available on the website it'll be in the description um try to you know alleviate some of the difficulties the pain and the struggles of your journey and find the more fluid or easier way out so you don't have to do what i did hopefully um, and in terms of the loneliness as well, to understand that, you know, there are other people like yourself. I started my journey when I, when I got to my teacher, she told me the word indigo child, and I had no idea what it meant. I went online and I researched it and I found myself, you know, uh, openly crying over a few of the accounts of indigo children. Uh, and I said, this is my life. The pills, the, the ADHD, the hyperactivity, the, you know, people thinking you're crazy, all the... Uh, you know, subversive uh, thoughts and, and experiences that I've had, the loneliness, the, you know, from the outside looking in, not being able to resonate with adults and knowing that there is a higher truth, there's a higher presence up there. And also being born in very dysfunctional families. As I read all of these things, I said, wow, I, first of all, I'm not alone. I'm not crazy, as opposed to what I thought for many years. And um, there is a sense or purpose or a trajectory that I need to connect to now. So that word saved me. It gave me immediately a meaning. And from that word, I evolved to Alex, Alexander, whatever I am today. Uh, but I was able to rebuild myself just from that word. And it was very, very important to me. Um, and I hope that this book is able to contribute as well to whoever reads it. Uh, if, if you're enticed by this video to try to, you know, to check it out and to read some of the experiences, because there's a lot of content in there, parallels, understandings, and 
the last chapter, which is actually the most important, is um, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, often I've I've noticed that um, there are a lot of terms, terminology in this in this field that is not defined enough, misdefined, or it's still abstract. So I go by highlighting the my understanding of the words truth, indigo, faith, love, and ego, and try to redefine these things so as to make a bit more sense for myself and for those around me. Okay. Um, that's what I wanted to share today. I'll read a short paragraph about my encounter with the Arcturians, actually. I think it's a relevant paragraph. It's a paragraph that came to me today. Um, and I'll do another video regarding the uh, regarding the book uh, whenever the time is right, probably sooner than later. I'll uh, just remind you that there is a webinar probably on the 15th. The dates haven't been set yet, uh, but that's the probability. I just want this period to pass so people are in a better state of mind and a, and a more a more positive and free state of mind. And then I hope that we can embark on this journey together. I will be continuing sessions uh, if you are interested. And there is a new Facebook page. The audiobook is is on. These are just the disclaimers. I'll put everything in the description so as not to, you know, to waste too much time. Um, I want to read a passage from the book. Um, if you indulge me a second. And I hope that it helps and that you do enjoy it. Um, okay. <clears throat> Another introduction which I hold very dear to me to this day is to my beloved space brothers from Arcturus. This experience came when I had finished my studies at the spiritual center and was out on my own exploring under the guidance of my etheric family. It was a winter day. I remember my cell phone had stopped working. I was quite angry at this since today it is such a necessity. My guides knew this was important to me and that I literally could not live without it. Yet everything happens for a reason. I made my way down to the center of Tel Aviv to get to the service and repair center. Um, it was late afternoon, so I was sure to have the joy of sitting there by the hours with half of the city and their damaged wireless paraphernalia. Safe to say I was not pleased, as I had work to do. As I got there, I was given a number. I had such a long waiting line in front of me that I left and went for a lengthy stroll in the adjacent mall. At the bottom of the building, there was a franchise of my favorite bookstore, and I walked straight to the spiritual and metaphysics section. I glanced again and again at the names on the sides of the covers, mostly at concepts that I was acquainted with, I reached an unusual title that struck me, We the Arcturians. It was 20 years old, but it still struck me as something I should definitely look at. I picked it up and began to speed read. It looked like a totally new material that I could benefit from greatly, so I was on my merry way. There are no coincidences. Luckily, I had just the time for a quick coffee and my number was up. Synchronicity, micro and macro. That night I devoured the book. Over the next two days I absorbed what it had to give me what seemed relevant, but then I knew from this source who they were, where their modus operandi was, what their connection to us. I decided to contact them. The representative of their consciousness called himself Jimael. He spoke to me in a very formal tone. The words were cut off one from another, Christopher Walkenish. The greeting was in English instead of Hebrew, and went, We are the Arcturians. We greet you, son of light, from the infinite consciousness of the multiverse. We welcome you with the love of the Creator. They were very kind and supportive. They told me, as I had already, as I already knew the basics from the book, that I was a very old soul created before time existed. They had a karmic debt towards me, as I had helped them when their civilization was in its infancy, much like ours is today. I was present then with support and love, and they had vowed to be here when I reached my awakening. They had me waiting for me, watching me since birth, and they were very pleased with the process of spiritual rebirth I was experiencing. As humanity was reaching the fifth dimension, not seen since Lemuria and Atlantis, they were the ones assigned to help the planet through this transition. They are from the planet Arcturus, the brightest star in the constellation of Bootis. That's the basic, and then I talk a bit about, you know, um, specifications about their race and so on, which you can find in the book. Um, in regards to Jimel, I've felt closer to Jimel during this time than most of my other spirit guides due to the frequency of our encounters. He exhibited endless compassion and love, despite not being nearly as advanced as the rest of my guidance. They are as physical as us, yet exhibit such honorable attributes that we could see them as almost saintly. They would teach me much about the physical nature of the universe, as well as time, through intense week-long daily sessions of information downloads I will address later. 
that was the one of the, the paragraphs regarding how I met the Arcturians. I I go into you know my my exchanges with Gmail a lot during the book uh, and with other entities as well. Um, so that was it for the video of the book. I do hope that you enjoyed it. I hope it was able to contribute and to give you some knowledge. And I do hope that uh, you're you're interested enough to at least check out the book. There's an audio version, as I said. We are working on a paperback version. Um, and, you know, this is important. It has been important to me. I guess now I'm much, a lot more committed than I was before. And it is my ultimate purpose. Um, so I'm trying to to be able to convey, to share, and, and uh, humbly, um, you know, ask you to be part of this experience. So you can hopefully be helped by the knowledge and the messages and the codes and the energetic downloads because at the end it's it's a batch of energy and it's a bunch of words on top of it but the energy is what matters and either you resonate with it or you don't um that's it it's really as simple as that everything is energy in the universe and this is an extension or the most ex important extension of my energy at the moment and i just wanted to share that with you i want to thank you for taking the time i i know it's been a bit of a long video uh, I want to send you my love. I ask you that you um, that you be kind to yourself during this period because I know it's not easy. It's not easy for me. It's not easy for anyone. Uh, it's not easy for people who are also in 3D beginning to awaken. It's actually more difficult for them. There is a point of light at the end of the tunnel and the tunnel ends very, very, very soon. Okay. I just ask that you try to get to the 12th, the 13th uh, without judging yourself, without putting too much emphasis on stuff that is going around, going on around you. I send you my love. I want to thank you for being part of this experience. Um, as I said before, you are my purpose. To be able to convey all this to you, to be able to help every person that I get an email from um, with, with appreciation and love, I'm humbled. I sometimes cannot believe that I'm actually able to help people in that, you know, to that extent, because I do get a lot of emails these days. But I am eternally thankful, because I can say that when I wake up and I go to sleep, I have meaning in my life, as opposed to the many times that I didn't. It was self-serving and it was not gratifying at all. So I want to thank you for being here. You are a reflection of me, of my new universe, of my new reality. And I hope to be able to really, um, with dedication and love, to be able to connect you to yours. Okay. Uh, thank you so much. I wish you a very good uh, day, evening, wherever you are. And namaste. Thank you. Bless you all. Bye-bye.